Listen. Welcome to the Nintendo Voice Chat episode 502. I'm your host for today, Zachary Ryan, joined today by Per Schneider. Hello. Brian Altano. Hi. Seth Macy. Yellow. And of course, Per Schneider. Oh, again, hi. Hey, <laughs> hi, everybody. Just wanted to keep you on your toes there, Pear. Uh, so once again, we are in the hot zone, coming at you live from our bedrooms, talking about Nintendo stuff. Uh, this week, we're going to talk a little bit about that crazy <laughs> Mario news. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Animal Crossing, as I'm sure will shock you. And then uh, thinking about playing a little game at the end of the show. I don't know if you guys are ready for it, but... Uh, oh, I can't wait. Game. We have never played a game on the show. This is going to be great. Okay. Brand new game just for you, Per Schneider. All right, I'm... so let's get right into it. Uh, something that got me very excited uh, this week... Nintendo uh, reportedly is working on a bunch of Mario remasters to celebrate uh, Super Mario Brothers' 35th anniversary. Uh, I, I feel like this show has hypothesized and sort of, uh, you know, looked longingly to the future and asked the Nintendo gods to like, please give us some Mario ports or, or remasters. And now we're potentially hearing that they're giving us all of those ports and remasters. So uh, BGC originally reports that Nintendo is planning to re-release most of Super Mario's 35-year back catalog. We're talking about Super Mario 64. We're talking about Super Mario Sunshine. We're talking about Super Mario Galaxy. Guys, what is the validity of these Mario games coming to Switch? First of all, oh, that would be so nice <laughs> if we got all of those and that was all true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I should also mention that they, they are also talking about 3D World as well, but I feel like we've talked about 3D World as being probably the most reliable port to come to the Switch. 3D um, World is a is a, a long-running rumor about, uh -huh. um, yeah, that that, well, that game's going to come. That's the easiest port out of all of them, it, right? It also makes sense given their business model thus far on the Switch, which has been port every Wii U game to the Switch. So yeah. it would make sense yeah. that 3D World would come first, which I would be overjoyed to play through that game again 3d world is one of the mario games that i've only played through once but did like mm -hmm. but it's the other the other remasters the other rumors that have really got me excited about this brian are there any particular mario games you're looking forward to playing on the nintendo switch i mean i would play all these games but my gut reaction to this i guess after like you know decades of disappointment uh both in this world and in the personal world is that uh <laughs> this the, this is this reads like fan fiction and also right. it was within like the 36 hour window of april foolish town this day that is just like idiots parade of of nonsensical rumors like there was a ducktales game revealed today that was like fake like so grain of salt with all this that said uh it's a complete no-brainer i don't don't know exactly if I want or necessarily need to see remasters on all these. I think like just like a competent port of Mario 64 would be totally serviceable for me. That said, I will totally take something that looks like it's running in the Odyssey engine, like spoilers that one area in Odyssey did. Um, and so I think it, that there's a potential for that. There was some rumors going around that they, these would be basically packaged together in sort of like a, a Mario All-Stars type thing. That I totally don't see happening because they Nintendo can make so much more money selling these piecemeal. They have yeah, before. They, have. They, <laughs> they will again. Yeah. And so I, I, I would be amazed. I will say I'll be completely amazed. Uh, I will say my, my biggest takeaway from this is that selfishly, I'm kind of bummed that... Um, E3 is not happening. I, I think everybody is, but that uh, we didn't get to see whatever Nintendo booth they were going to make for this. Like if if this was really Mario's big birthday party year, um, then I'm I'm really bummed that that like fans didn't get to see that. Uh, That's a but, really great point. You're right. They they probably like if this is the center point of their their software lineup in the near future, they probably would have done this whole history of Mario setup. That would have been really really cool. Yeah, I mean, the stuff they did with Link's Awakening last year, like, damn near brought a tear to my eye. Like, they hired artists to come in and build actual figurines and dioramas based on the game. And, like, I just, I, I, you know, I think, like, like, we all absolutely love Super Mario. Like, he is like, pretty much responsible for creating the the industry and the medium that we love and, and work in and worship. And, uh, like, it's a, kind of a bummer that his, his birthday party got rained out, you know? So, I, I have really... really I'm greedy. I want I want Super Mario 64 with the up, upgraded graphics of Odyssey. I'm really like because I've you know we've revisited Mario 64 on the DS before as well. I feel like it's time to give it that new sheen because when when you play that game, it still feels so great. 
Um, and I, th I think they can, and I felt like Odyssey actually fe feels very similar to 64. Yeah, I, we, we, I want it pretty. We talked about it. We talked about it a little bit on the show, but uh, maybe six months ago, we hooked up a 64 at, or Sam has a 64 hooked up at his desk. And we, in, in the course of the week, we had a goal kind of in the office, like who can get the most stars or how many stars can we get over the course of the week in, in Mario 64. And so we just sat down for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes and played through a level, got a couple of stars and handed the controller off to the next person. And I, like you pair, like I was shocked at how well that game holds up, how good it totally. feels to play, how responsive it is. I, I, I think the pie in the sky dream for me would be Mario 64 sort of remade, remastered in the Odyssey engine. But I wonder what sort of mechanical implications and difficulties. Like, I wonder, you know, it, it, is it a case that that we haven't gotten Mario Odyssey DLC because they're working on some incredible remaster in that engine? Or, you know, like, what does it mean to bring 64 into that engine? Because I know, but because, like, I think that if they're going to increase that graphical fidelity to that extent, they're going to also have to increase a lot of the mechanics, like make sure that that, you know, that game still feels correct, but is also modern enough to, to work in that engine. Yeah, and to add a quick footnote to that, I think that one of the reasons Mario 64 has endured all these years is uh, the way people have sort of broken it. Mm -hmm. Like people have basically speed run that game infinitely and they've clipped through walls and ceilings and they've done that backwards jump up Bowser's steps to get into his house earlier and all that fun stuff. And uh, I it would kind of bum me out to see a lot of that go away. Although video games are almost designed to be broken. So I think a whole new generation would find whole new ways to tear open a brand new version of Mario 64. I, it just makes me giddy just even thinking about something like that even, happening. Even adjusting the proportions of the character model mean that the game, the bugs will be different and the game will feel slightly different, right? Like Mario as a character has evolved. Um, not just, he's not just more polygons. He's like taller and different. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I, I would, I, I don't mind if the game feels a little different as long as it preserves some of the, of the original challenges. There were a couple of areas in Mario 64 where the camera got in the way. Like, I love the Bowser's Castle levels in Mario 64, like the kind of like the playground seesaw elevator levels. But like it was sometimes hard to see where Mario would land, you know, just kind of depth yeah. perception and camera wise. And that would, I feel like, have to be adjusted. But then also, I broke out Sunshine. I told you guys this. And Sunshine has a lot of moves in it that weren't in the later games. So I almost feel like Sunshine, you can pretty up, fix some of the bugs and, and the camera issues, and you're done. Yeah, that, that, was my, that was my note for Sunshine. Seth, I, I did want to throw to you, though, and let you jump in here, too. You haven't had an opportunity to talk to these games. Which of these games is your most uh, desired port to the Switch? Well, um, it's going to be an unpopular choice, but I said it before. I think they should remake Super Mario All Stars and the new Super Mario engine. Oh, I think they should have yeah. done that last time instead of just giving I, us the ROM of the Super NES version. You're right. That is an unpopular choice. <laughs> 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 of all of all the art styles, like I still think about the the time the first time I ever played Super Mario 64 it was like one of like the three moments in gaming where everything changed. So yeah, of course I want Super Mario 64. So so like the the skeletal frames of all the original NES Mario games are phenomenal, right? Uh but why why not put them in a a different art style than the one we've seen 19 times already? <laughs> Yeah, th th that kind of reminds me of like what I was saying last week on the show. Maybe that, that that's the episode that's lost to time now, but we were talking about getting a version of uh, uh, a, n a new Mario game that would be Super Mario Brothers 4 that would pick up where Super Mario World left off. It would be a 2D pixel art, you know, side scroller, kind of ditch the style of the new Super Mario Brothers games, but still be a 2D platformer uh, in the vein of those, you know, NES and Super NES Mario games. Yeah. There's also yeah, the, I, I, the I've been re Let's go ahead. I was just gonna say there's also the the two galaxy games, so we can get to those in a minute. Um because I those mean, those I think would need some significant work to work without motion controls in some way. I, I think so too. Uh the last note that I want to say before we talk about Galaxy there is uh, uh I, I've been I just finished new the original new Super Mario Brothers on the DS, and I do think that that, that it's an interesting choice, Seth, because the, those games feel much different than I remember them. Like it, it, those games are much more floaty than like a traditional 2D Mario on, on Nintendo or, or Super NES. 
I was kind of surprised to, to go back to that and discover that. But um, yeah, I do want to talk about Galaxy. Uh, I think you're right, Brian. I think that is honestly one of the harder tricks to pull off in this. Um, but I, I, I think Super Mario Galaxy is the best 3D Mario game. So, or Galaxy 2. But Galaxy is right, right there. It's a very, very close second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no mention of Galaxy 2 in this list, but uh, I, I would love to see Galaxy on the Switch. We've well, talked I don't know, about I've seen lists where they say too. every single Mario game ever created or even... even conceived of is going to come out <laughs> i mean that's i mean that's the problem with the, the rumor mill here right like you know it's that purple monkey dishwasher factor of yeah well, you know They're taking it's probably... all of shigeru miyamoto's cocktail napkins from exactly the <laughs> yeah it's probably only gonna be one of these games but what if it was all of them what? yeah, uh, yeah. Brian, i will talk, i will take one of these games <laughs> talk to me about galaxy on switch uh, so Galaxy on Switch uh, is a perfect fit, but obviously that is a game like many of the games on Wii that uh, are sort of stuck in time on the platforms they were built around because they are specifically designed around the motion controls on on Wii. But, and there's definitely ways to circumvent that, right? But um, like I, I mean, the Joy-Con the Joy-Con has an accelerometer built in; it has an infrared sensor that you can use as a pointer. So, you know, we've talked about it with Skyward Sword as well. Like, I don't necessarily feel like it a, a port would be super difficult. I think it would just be, you know, you'd have well, to that, just play it like this. Yeah, you well, can that, even do the shake right for the yeah. for the spin and everything if you wanted I, to do it like that. I, I think that was like a that's a s sort of serviceable deal that we could have had a year ago, but with the switch light out there, you're immediately uh, okay. cutting off a massive that's a really you know, portion of your population there. Um, yeah, I, it's like I mean I, the thing is like everything has to even like so, there, there was the Mario Odyssey levels that you re sort of needed motion control or felt like they needed motion control or even like Breath of the Wild levels and stuff like that that played better with motion control or without motion control um i remember playing like Odyssey on an airplane and just like hitting a bunch of walls being like oh what do you do you want me to elbow this guy next to me like 60 yeah, times yeah, yeah. get this moon or whatever but yeah because um, some of the race stuff you have to you have to like build momentum by yeah what do you have to do? I'll stop doing this. I'll stop doing this. Yeah. Can you, what was it? I'm doing weird chicken dances. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> gift that. Oh, please give that. <laughs> um, no, but the, but the Switch has more buttons than the, than the Wii, right? Don't forget how limited the Wii was in the, yeah. in the setup, right? You had two buttons on your left hand, and like instantly, you know, you have now a clickable thumbstick on each hand as well, in addition to you know, the D-pad and stuff. There, there are ways to, I feel like, map some of the actions just to button. I, I, remember, remember? I, I remember that original Switch reveal uh, when uh, Shigeru Miyamoto came out on stage and looked right into the camera and said, more buttons than the Nintendo Wii, and everybody went crazy. That was really <laughs> They're cool. all like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everybody loved that. <laughs> Uh, so a couple more things, a couple more things to note here about these Mario games, uh, proposed Mario games. So this was obviously going to be uh, re reveal this year. Uh, you know, we w the reports also say that we will be getting a Super Mario 3D World that's getting a deluxe edition with new levels and content, similar with what they did to New Super Mario Brothers Wii on the Switch. Um, and then VentureBeat also reports that a new Paper Mario game will launch this year and that it intends to return the series roots, which I'm really excited about. I like the Paper Mario series. I do feel like Color Splash was a bit of a weird one. Uh, so I'm excited to hear that there's returning to, to the roots there. Uh, you know, I'll always play a Paper Mario game, but I did want to ask everybody on a scale of 1 to 64, <laughs> uh, what are the odds that we'll see each of these Mario games? So starting with uh, Super Mario 3D World pair. 100%. Oh, 64? Okay. 64. 64 out of 64. <laughs> Got it. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Seth? Yeah, that's a 64 out of 64. Okay. Yeah, I think we're probably all in agreement. That's a that's a no-brainer. No what about Super Mario 64 coming to Switch? Hmm. I think that that's probably like a 44 out of 64. This is a weird scale. Yeah, I was going to say like a 33 and a 30. I think a 32 for sure. 32. Yeah, I think I think it's a 32. It's a 50-50 shot. So, whoops. 33 and a third. It was like, like Clay Fighter or Naked Gun? It's it was Naked Gun, yeah. Uh, okay, and then Super Mario Sunshine. I feel like that's maybe the lowest one. Yeah. That's, that's the one that I think needs the most work. I think yeah, so I played too. it recently and it didn't. It didn't give me the magical feelings that I remembered. Oh, see, I, I'm a Super Mario Sunshine apologist. I really. Oh, love I that am game. too. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, don't, I just, don't play I, it now. I think oh, it's, that's, it, that's, that. yeah, it's, it's hard to play that game after. I, I imagine like you'd never play that game back in the day. Imagine playing that game for the first time after something like, you know, Odyssey or even Galaxy, Galaxy. 2. Yeah. Yeah. You know what game like would have benefited from motion controls? It's Super Mario Sunshine. I think that would work great with motion controls, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and then lastly, uh, what, what are we thinking about Super Mario Galaxy? What of these arbitrary numbers that we've assigned? What's the possibility of that coming to the Switch? I, this is a 16 out of 64 for me, but I, I do think I, I do think it's much more likely that we'll get Super Mario Galaxy and not two for a while. Like I feel like if they're celebrating the history of of Mario, they'll go with like each iconic installment. Two is awesome, but like they'll go one, and then maybe someday in the future we'll get Galaxy Two. That's probably true. Even though I like two a little a little bit better than yeah, it's slightly better. Yeah. Well, uh, that's a lot of Mario news, and as a Mario fan, it's very exciting. But there's a couple other exciting announcements this week that I uh, wanted to highlight here before we move on. Uh, first of all, we've got the Outer Worlds coming to the Switch on June 5th, uh, releasing physically and digitally. The physical version requires a day one patch and expected to take up to six gigabytes uh, uh, to download, which actually is not that, that bad. It's uh, not as big a download is, as some other third-party games. Is that just the patch, though? Oh yeah, maybe that's just the patch. I believe that's just the patch. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're, that, that makes sense. We're getting a lot of games now where the entire game is not on the cartridge, and you got to update. So yeah, yeah I I feel bad for physical collectors in that regard because that's um, that's that's kind of what's I, look, that's a, a bunch of curse words that I'm not going to say, but that's not <laughs> <laughs> like I, I I I that bums me out for them because uh, you're basically even if you want to be a physical collector, you are being funneled in a digital no matter what you do. I mean, there's a lot of game modes that are locked to online and, you know, and thus have to be connected and such. But uh, this is a single player game and it would be cool for people who collect single player games to just have that game on their shelf and know they can play it whenever without having to deal with a six gigabyte patch taking up you know, most of their SD card. Yeah, and then after the apocalypse, there are no more patches, no more download servers, so you can't even play it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I really loved The Outer Worlds. Uh, I don't know if, did anybody else on the panel get to? Get yeah, to I really like it. Yeah. I played it a bit, yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's To me, it's, it's what Fallout 4 could have been. You know, I, I think it's a really awesome uh one of those types of games it doesn't break the mold it doesn't do anything like new or amazing it's just a really solid like crpg experience you know yeah it's definitely a a a great addition to the switch's library i'm fascinated to see how it runs i had the same sort of take when i was playing doom eternal last week i was like this is great and it's gorgeous wow how's this gonna look on switch so we'll see um yeah, I I hope they can pull it off. It was actually not the best looking game on next on yeah. current gen consoles. It, so. it has some moments for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's a little closer to the kind of Bethesda Elder Scrolls last generation engine games, right? So yeah. that's why I'm hopeful that the Switch version will actually look pretty good because Elder Scrolls is good. Yeah, I was gonna say Switch version of Skyrim looks pretty good. Uh, and I I will say that I I classified this as a CRPG, which is maybe a little bit outside of its actual wheelhouse. I just mean in the fact that it is a very traditional uh, Bethesda style first person RPG, not a you know isometric top down uh, RPG. Uh, okay. Also, Minecraft Dungeons launching May 26th. Uh, it was initially supposed to come in April, but is now coming in May, thanks to the coronavirus. Um, this is a game that I've uh, never heard of. Anybody else what? would like to talk about this? Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not a like Minecraft a, like guy. A Minecraft RPG. Okay, well, what are you doing it? You, you role play. That's what, ro- that's what the RP stands for. I think, I mean, it's honestly, it's closer to kind of like the four player Baldur's Gate kind of dungeon yeah. crawlers where, yeah, like, do you think Diablo, Minecraft Diablo? I mean, I yeah. love Diablo, but. Yeah. Okay. I love Diablo. I love uh, Minecraft. I love Diablo 3 on Switch. Yeah. But, but it's, it's, it's a big, I mean, it's a really big project. Obviously, Microsoft shelled out a lot for this franchise, right? Uh, it's kind of cool that they're not making this the center point of the Xbox slash PC experience and that we're actually getting these titles, uh, which is you know, acknowledgement that there's a young player base on other platforms that might not be on the Xbox and PC platform. So um, I, I think it looks really cool. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, actually. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's kind of a best case scenario for a first party essentially exclusively buying a wildly popular IP uh, and not mm-hmm. hoarding, you know, all the wealth to themselves. Like it's it's been Microsoft in general has been very generous to Nintendo over the last few years, which has been super cool to see. And so I'm glad that my Minecraft as a as a franchise didn't just stay in one place because mm-hmm. I really dig it. No pun intended. I assure you, it's not a charity. They're, I mean, they're making bank with they're making bank with Minecraft on Nintendo platforms. Let's be honest. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Minecraft on Switch is great. I love to just sit down in bed and just play Minecraft. I mean, where was that going? Where was that sentence yeah, going? I'm really glad you. I'm really glad you, you uh, stopped there. Got through that one, Seth. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask <laughs> you, who among us uh, doesn't like to lay in bed? Come on. <laughs> Fair point, fair point. Uh, Brian, you, you jumped back into Minecraft pretty hardcore when it came to Switch. Is this something yeah. that tickles your fancy? You you like a good RPG. Will you be playing a Minecraft Dungeon game? Yeah, I would describe my fancy as being currently tickled by this Minecraft Dungeons game. <laughs> <laughs> I love to get in the bed and <laughs> tickle I love, to get in, I love to get in bed and tickle my Minecraft. Um, <laughs> well, okay. We got to get back on track here. I was asking if you're going to play this game. Is this yes, 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 cool. <laughs> yes. We'll, we'll, I'm all into it. <laughs> we'll, look for, we'll look for some original reporting from you on that <laughs> later in the coming this month. Awful. So uh, this seems as good a time as any because of this delay. I, I did want, you know, we, we like playing a little game here called Question Block, uh, which Pear, does, he's got some strong opinions on. But uh, we have Not a question again. here from... Uh, Bogar Trevino, which first of all, that's a 10 wow. out of 10 name. Secondly, 64 out of 64. <laughs> he writes in and says, Marvel DC Comics stopped publishing comics uh, on account of COVID-19. Do you think game publishers will stop uh, game releases soon? This kind of goes hand in hand to what we were just talking about with Minecraft Dungeons launch date slipping. Um, we, we talked a little bit about this in, in previous episodes and, and a little bit about it on some of our other shows. Uh, uh, I, I think my my concern here is not the games that we know about. I think it's more so games that are, you know, E3 games that are unannounced that were third, fourth quarter games or even early 2021 games that we're going to see. I mean, we may not know that they were pushed, but I think we're going to see a, a, a deficit or a glut of games that were supposed to come out in that time frame that have been impacted by manufacturing, development, uh, all these different aspects being hit by this. Uh, virus what do you guys think the yeah key, uh, go for it go ahead Brian. okay the key is you know the stage of the development of the game is you know you're not developers are taking their work home right we've we've talked to a couple of publishers on you know how they're facilitating uh, development in in these times where people work from home like creating like sending home dev kits with people and how difficult all of that is to kind of replicate that infrastructure but they're managing right so the coders the designers that can do their work at home however nobody's gonna attach balls to a suit and do mocap at home right and so games that are in early stages of development for that rely on you know mocap for animations cutscene work all of that stuff is gonna slow down and grind to a halt so yeah. you'll see Indie devs are going to be able to still thrive and you know and, and work at home, but you will definitely see impact on some of the bigger games that are earlier. Yeah, no, totally. The um, uh, uh, apparently both of the Ori games were developed remotely without being in the same studio. Um, so it's doable, but again, that game didn't require a mocap studio. At least I don't think. Um, mm-hmm. and so there's the I think that like weirdly enough, uh, it's this is a really good question for this show because i think you know puzzle platformers and like quirky indie games really thrive and kick kick butt on switch uh Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's like i i I use my switch less for sort of like massive cinematic experiences uh that i look for in in triple a next gen games and stuff like that uh that said i think something like breath of the wild will absolutely be affected by this or the sequel to it right um we already read from Sakurai that uh, it, this could potentially uh, delay, you know, development over DLC for Smash Brothers, which, you know, you would look at that game and be like, do they do mocap for that game? I actually don't know the answer to that. Maybe they do. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I think I think there's going to be you're going to see like an, an indie renaissance right now, probably more so than ever. Uh, they're going there'll be a little bit of time where there's less 
competition on that front. Um, and so like the big game of the week might be a game that's developed by a small studio, which is really cool. That said, I think a lot of like the bigger, grander scale projects are definitely going to get impacted by this. Um, and we're going to see delays. And I think Zach's totally right in that um, there's a bunch of games that we probably don't even know are going to exist or going to be released or, or happen. Um, that will get delayed and nintendo's for all i know not launching a new platform this year so uh it's going to be business as usual for them but i think it's you know it's going to be pretty difficult on 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 the other uh, for the other guys you know for microsoft and sony have to launch new next-gen consoles this year and justify the high prices of those things with killer games and if a lot of those games start slipping into 2021 then you're losing the value of, of wanting to purchase those which is all great news for Nintendo, who has now, you know, really hitting their stride with uh, with the Switch. And their biggest issue right now is getting hardware on the shelves. Yeah. 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 You can't get the Switch anywhere still. Yeah. 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 It's sold out everywhere. Yeah. Oh, well, Bogar, thank you for that question. Fit in quite nicely right there. And I think it's something important to talk about. Um, so I wanted to try a couple of new segments this week. Casey's not here. She doesn't make the rules. So we're going to do some new stuff. Uh, we, we're obviously home in our own homes. Uh, trying to do the best we can for these shows. And so, uh, you know, one of the things that, that our audience asked from us is to maybe show and tell something that we like about our uh, home studios. So I wanted to take a little opportunity here and have each of us show off one thing that they love in their home that is maybe Nintendo related and, and might resonate with our audience. So Seth, uh, why don't we start with you? Why don't you show us something cool that you've got uh, in your home studio? Check this, check this bad boy out right here. <laughs> Okay. That. Oh man. That what is a limited edition Seattle Mariners. Ooh, Nintendo DS. Yes, that you could wow. only get at uh at the Seattle Mariners park back when Nintendo was a uh, a majority stakeholder uh -huh. in the team. I got this at the Goodwill by my house. Wow. Oh my amazing. god. Yeah, it's from afar. You can see I'm playing uh one of my Shrek collections for I thought it would be funny to own all the Shrek games on DS. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> I know it, it turned out it wasn't at all. That's the most Seth ass thing I've ever heard. That is... I thought it would be funny to own all the Shrek games. And what did you call it again? What did you call the it? Shrek Lection? The Shrek Lection. Yeah. Yeah. No, it cool. works great. It's uh it's in surprisingly amazing condition considering that it was in a thrift shop in Maine. It has yeah. The, it has the uh the slug that you put in there for the uh Game Boy Advance cart. Oh, yeah, yeah. Keep, keep yeah. Right out of there. Yeah. When you bought this at the uh I think it was Safeco Field, I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure there was software on it where you could like order a hot dog from your <laughs> DS while a game was playing that, that rules. Yeah. That That's... doesn't exist anywhere. It was only there. You'd like plug into the, uh, the network at that ball field and you would just like, Hey, I want to some popcorn while I watch Ken Griffey jr slug another one out of the park that's a, that's pretty cool that sounds like a nice little feature or topic that we should do here on nbc where it's like all the different weird functionalities of the ds you that... know the there's yeah, that, that and I, I know show the, in and of itself the 3ds has that whole like louvre tour that yeah you I, that was I'm, like, I'm actually gonna i'm gonna pivot my show and tell to that because that's uh oh. hold on let me grab it Keep okay going. cool so in that case uh brian's gonna go grab his his show and tell but pair why don't you show us what, what you've got to show off Okay, well, this is but one of the legends of which the people speak, so let me show it to you. Oh, well, here we go. Here it's the we Nintendo go. 63. Oh. So I'm, uh, in case you can't tell, I have to step over dogs here. They're both sleeping here, but this is... Oh, are you kidding me? That's really cool. Yeah, let's see. Higher Wind Waker intro title scroll as a scroll. And like, well, you have to go really far back. Sorry, but not. Wow. A, you can go very, very wide. Where did you get that? <laughs> yeah, what it, where did that come from? You know, it was a, before the game came out, it was a it was Chachi that Nintendo made. Oh, but uh, it's really amazing. cool. It has the exact style and everything. Yeah, they did, they did a really nice job. So did they send some of those to the office? Did you buy that? Where did that come from? I think it was I think it was given out at an event. Okay. A windbreaker. Remember, it's been so long, guys. So that would have come to you in like 2002, 2003, somewhere in there. 1900, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah, Ryan, it's really cool. I love that thing. Why don't you show us what you got going? I was just looking up to see if the Wind Waker scrolls anywhere on eBay. That, that's like 
it, apparently one sold for two thousand dollars in 2017 Whoa. so that's an incredibly <laughs> rare thing wow that hold is on wild. to that um <laughs> and zach just as Zach just mentioned, uh, this is the Nintendo 3DS Louvre guide, which is uh, basically a guide for the, the entire museum. And uh, you can only buy this in the actual museum in Paris, uh, which, Zach, did we, you and I were in Paris for like a couple of days. Did we try to go to the museum? Was there like a long so, line? Did we? So here's, here's how that went down. <clears throat> so my third day we were in paris uh, brian and i and andrew goldfarb after gamescom we took a couple of days to go to amsterdam a couple of days to go to paris and uh uh my third day in paris i said i'm going to the louvre i'm gonna spend all day in the louvre and see as much art as i can and listen to like some of my favorite records and stuff and uh, uh brian and andrew went and did brian and andrew stuff and uh then as i was winding down i was like okay i'm almost done both of them texted me and were like can you buy us copies of that League of <laughs> game? So I picked up copies for them. Yeah. That's right. Okay, yeah. so that's how I got it. Uh, so this is super cool. You put this in, you can basically uh, rent a 3DS at the museum and you can walk around and stand in front of uh, displays uh, of exhibits and it will give you like an actual readout of them. It will show you 3D models. It lets you zoom in on the paintings and stuff like that. Um, I believe this thing was like, 20 bucks and it's a weird little cart because it has the Mona Lisa on it. Uh, and yeah, you can only get this there. I actually don't know if they still sell this there. They probably do. Um, so yeah, it's, it's super weird. Uh, when you look at this on a 3ds at home, it's just like a sort of a micro version of the museum. It's not a game. Um, but who cares? Uh, it's yeah, it's just a cool little collectible that I will never get rid of. And That's thank really you, Zach. Cool. Hey, Zach, yeah, is that a hamper, a hamper behind you? It's a Legend of Zelda Wind Waker hamper that they gave out. In <laughs> that's <right. laughs> yeah, that's my, that's, that's my hamper over there. That's where I keep my dirty clothes. So that's actually what I was going to point out today. Sometimes there's Nintendo themed shirts in there. No, uh, <laughs> Cleaned up today. For, for my show and tell, I want to do a, a little, I got to do a little walk and talk here, but come oh, with cool. me. Oh, this is going to chop off. So, no, no, this is fine. So really? if, can you see this? Yeah, I'm barely. Yes. Okay, so take a look at this. This is the uh, Ocarina of Time world map, uh, oh. laser etched into pine wood. Um, oh. So this is by Neutral Grounds. Uh, they're an artist collective that they do like sort of niche uh, uh, art. They do like a lot of like niche cartography art. And so this is uh, the Ocarina of Time map. Uh, you know, you can wow. see down here in the corner, it's got this like really cool oh. sort of item gallery and stuff and all the mm. all the locations are labeled with a uh, hylian text uh it's just like a really cool gift that uh, a friend of mine bought me uh and has been in my house for oh gosh six or seven years now i think really cool but, yeah that's one of my favorite one of my favorite zelda anythings i really i really like that piece because like you know brian and i have talked about this a, a lot but like we we really like video game stuff that doesn't look like video game stuff at first glance yeah you know, like i'm really into like like you, you know and i get a lot of people well when i when it was in my living room i did but like a lot of people that would kind of have to take a second glance at it and be like oh that that's a zelda map like you know yeah. so i always thought that was kind of cool yeah. yeah i just i just looked that up zach it's uh there's like a lot of high-res pictures of it on neutralgroundshop.com yeah uh, it's gorgeous man that is a really them? really cool thing yeah they're still making them um yeah. they have a note saying that they're kind of delayed in production right now obviously because of what's going yeah. on uh sure. but man that's cool looking yeah i had no yeah. idea you had that dude that's beautiful yeah it's one of my favorite like one of my favorite things that i have at my house uh cool. okay cool show and tell guys thanks for doing that that was a lot of fun can do I, that I got like a thousand for several hours. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I could, I could, I could do this every week as long as we're home, which I guess we're going to be for a while. So Forever. break Get them the out. <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, so there's another new segment that I wanted to try out this week. Uh, you know, we're all playing animal crossing. Like it's going out of style. So here's a new segment that I like to call, Hey, how's your Island? <laughs> so Brian, Hey, how's your Island, Brian? Oh boy, my island is it's it's awesome right now. I'm really happy about it. Uh, so I rolled credits on Animal Crossing. I won't give any spoilers, but um, uh, you can do that by getting your town to three stars, which is actually not that difficult. Um, I think Sam was able to do it in like 30 hours of play, and I'm at 148 hours. Wow. Yikes! <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's there's nothing. There's nowhere to go yeah. right now. So this yeah. I just I just have... crossed. 
I just crossed the hundred hour mark myself and had to have like a real heart to heart with myself. Like, you know, maybe do something different one night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. it was like rainy and foggy all weekend here. Not like yeah. I could go anywhere anyway, but, uh, it, it was even less of a reason to go outside. So I think I played for like 30 hours this weekend. It was kind of crazy. Um, so I rolled credits on the game. Um, I, I, it was really beautiful. I, I, almost teared up at the ending because it's just like really sweet and it's also just we've talked about this before it's such a nice time to have this game um and you unlock terraforming by doing that which to me i was sort of just like oh did i beat animal crossing like am i done now like uh and the opposite happened which it actually opened up so much more opportunity now for me to sort of go around and fix all the things in my town that were always annoying to me like Mm -hmm. weird crooked little rivers or like areas that i always had to like you know pogo stick hop over or whatever it is vault yeah um and so i decided to basically give myself like a huge front yard and backyard and then dig uh, essentially a giant moat around my home uh, Mm -hmm. with a two inch gap, which your character is capable of jumping over, but animals are not. So no animal will ever set foot on my property. (laughs) Uh, I also built these like basically giant ancient walls that uh, have fountains and Godzilla's on each side. And I'm building two massive uh, woolly mammoth skeletons on each side of my house. And my backyard has multiple rivers and bridges and ponds so I can go and catch rare fish without any animals bothering me. I've also (laughs) taken... Yeah, I've also moved every single home. The point of the game by not letting them cross the moat, you're not letting the animals do the crossing of the game is called hear, hear me out seth because i'm actually making things even worse for them uh i've quartered every animal in the game off into a specific section which i've walled off and bridged off uh i have paid i've paid <laughs> tom no- zoo. that's animal zoo yeah that's brian exotic uh, I've paid That's Tom Nook 50,000 bells for each animal to move in a specific grid. And now I have all of them basically in one place that I can see from my mansion to keep an eye on them. So all of the animals are like in rows. I feel yeah. like you're misunderstanding the point of this game. What are you talking about? The point of this game is to be king. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so please make a uh, custom graphic of brian's face and just says obey <laughs> that he can hang up inside everyone's house uh hey hey Seth. Uh, yeah hey, yo what, what's hey, up how's your island uh i just unlocked the ability to make trash uh-huh. so i'm working <laughs> on uh, making trash bags and a trash house so i'm just gonna make because i got the the punk rock outfit so i'm gonna be a gutter uh-huh. punk. Yeah. i'm just gonna live in and among trash and i got a <laughs> racing car bed i sleep in a racing car bed i sleep in a big bed with my wife Wow. In Animal Crossing? No, that's a Simpsons joke it's, just for Seth. Oh. But I think it's a racing car bed, and I was so excited just to make that joke. That's very good. That's <laughs> nice. I didn't know if you had like a I don't know if you had a quarantine wedding or something that no one <laughs> no one knew about. Oh, that looks good, but it's like it's not as cool as putting all the animals in jail. <laughs> I got I got my I got my island here. Um I've started making my custom cobblestone patterns oh, so mm-hmm. that, that it looks oh. a little bit more like a real town, you know. So, so pair are those the cobblestones that you can get in game, or is that something that you've done in design? No, that's a that's a, te- that's a texture I made. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. that's cool. I've seen so, a lot yeah, of them. Um, and like, yeah, so you know, you're you're gonna replace when you get terraforming, you're gonna replace all because the yeah. problem with those custom patterns is that you can accidentally pick them up. Yeah. Whereas to the terraforming stuff allows you to put down tracks uh and you won't you can't pick them up you have to basically go into the terraforming tool which puts a little hard hat on you Ah. oh Oh, i also i tweeted this out um and uh i I also built like an ign studio in in my home to so i was think i was thinking of actually putting four chairs in there and maybe uh, us doing some nvc stuff i can put some nvc banners on the wall so yeah we'll experiment with that uh, yeah, cool. I just I just retweeted from the the NBC uh, Twitter account pairs oh, nice. NBC 500 T-shirt design, which I thought was really awesome. Cool. Yeah, um, I like that. super cool. I'm wearing that right now. Like you can see me here in my Japanese garden. That oh, cool! Made a little uh, made a little yeah. bamboo garden. That's just the <laughs> that's just the textures you can make and put on the ground. You know, little little circles and stuff. But yeah. I like that quite a bit. Uh, my oh. my island is flourishing. I've just I spent a significant portion of my day on Saturday uh, planting a giant flower patch. I did like a whole, like the whole 
part one part of the west side of my island is now just like a giant flower patch i'm trying to breed uh some hybrid flowers um which is more difficult than i remember but um now that I got the pattern down, I think in the next couple of days here, I'll see some cool hybrids. Uh, I also am using some of the fossils as decoration. <laughs> now I've got two of the Raptor boys right out in front of my yeah. uh, airport. So I put I put the, the two fossil Raptors kind of facing each other as like kind of an arc. And then I put pine trees in front of that. So they're kind of like peeking up over the trees. I think that looks really cool. I put hey, if, you find, if, you, if you find a mammoth skull, can you give it to me? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you're looking for any, I'll, I'll trade you. Uh, I, I put a bunch of the stone archways like at the edges or at the ends of all my bridges. So that's really coming together. Uh, I completely forgot to talk, talk to Tom Nook for like, a, like almost a week. <laughs> like I, I got so caught up in, in item trading and, and turnip pricing and all the other stuff that animal crossing has to offer that, uh, you know, so one of my friends mentioned like, Oh yeah, all my residents are moving in. Cause I built my KK slider stage. And I was like, Oh, I haven't talked to Tom Nook in like a week. So I just like, <laughs> stopped playing the game essentially so I, I you know i just set up all that stuff so I, it's funny because i've had the game for a lot longer than uh, uh a lot of the folks that i'm playing with on discord and stuff but now i'm suddenly behind them in terms of like my, my timeline but my island is looking really good um i also bought a lot of crazy costumes that i'm very into now i have a superhero costume i have a power nice. ranger costume uh, i have this like crazy elton john jumpsuit that's like yeah. this broad collar and like like a green and yellow check pattern yeah. Uh, so it's just getting real weird out there. I, I really like it a lot. I, 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 I got say, a I got a mustache uh, to send you, by the way. Oh, great. great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was I was texting with a friend of the show, Andrew Goldfarb, <laughs> last night, and uh, he and I were both commenting on like I have not been this into a game <laughs> since probably Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Like I I am it feels like a crazy thing to say in the moment when you're playing something new and you've been playing it for a few weeks, but like in the same way where like you kind of have to gut check or I kind of had to gut check with breath of the wild. Like I, I think this is one of my favorite games ever. <laughs> yep. And you know, he and I were talking about it last night and part of it is because the game is fantastic, but I think such a bigger part of it is like, uh, you know, more so than any other animal crossing, there's now all these tools and and opportunities to, really interact with the community of people that are playing and min maxing and giving tips. And so like, it's, it's really, really awesome to finish a work day and check in and see like, Oh, here's what all my friends have been doing and I can go visit their <laughs> islands and, you know, talk to them about their items and stuff. And like, man, I just, I'm, it sounds corny, but like, I'm just so thankful to have this game right now and to be enjoying it as much as I am. And it's just like, it's one of my favorite gaming experiences in years. I'm totally really with you. It. Yeah. It's gonna be a mega hit, man. This game is done. This game is oh, gonna it's gonna be monstrous. Really well. it, I mean, it, it's crazy too because like people that I know that aren't into games at all are hitting me up. Like, I'm trying <laughs> to find a Switch. I really want to play Animal Crossing. It seems like a really cool thing. And like, I, yeah, I think you're right, Pierre. Like, we are already saw. You know, it posted millions of of copies sold in Japan alone, and I think it's just yep. gonna continue to just be a, a blockbuster, yeah. which is awesome. Like, yeah, I'm 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 totally with you. I'm completely enamored with this game. It's utterly charming and wonderful. It feels like there's so much like every time I sit down to play it, there's like 16 different things I want to do, and my my head is bouncing between which one do I do. Yep. I I was like hopelessly addicted to the GameCube one, but I think like I I always. I tried and tried and tried to sort of recapture that magic with the later ones. And to some extent I did with new leaf. I think that's the one I went like sort of the hardest yeah. on. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the I, I started wondering, like, did I only love this franchise because I played it at a time and a place when I had the time to, to play it and love it. Um, which could be true now. Cause I mean, we're all this, you know, there's not a lot going on. So here we are. <laughs> we, um, we have the time. That's for sure. Yeah. But uh, new horizons totally proved that wrong for me. Cause it, it made me realize this it just takes the right balance of of factors for uh, a game like this to be so addictive and, and wonderful and perfect for me and i yeah i I'm, i played 150 hours of this game i could easily see myself playing 300 400 hours of this game um Damn. my wife doesn't want to hear that but it's that's the <laughs> truth <laughs> for me i've uh it's almost like uh like a little kid having to take a bath like it, some days i just don't want to do it and then i get in there and i don't want to get out <laughs> And I was just like <laughs> fishing along and having a great old time. So yeah, I caught uh, two string fish. Oh, yeah, that's like, awesome. 
Yeah, yeah. those things are worth fifteen thousand bells. Did you know? I that? got I got a string fish and then two coelacanth back to back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, know, I, I noticed caught, some. I haven't caught a coelacanth yet. I've caught I caught I went to the Southern Hemisphere game and caught two sharks though. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Brian, yeah, it, it's no. I was gonna say I think it's important that the people who don't time travel keep reminding me that I'm cheating. But then they also go to Southern Hemisphere, Hemisphere people's islands, and they come to my island and they take all the the fun things that I've gotten from time travel. <laughs> I think that's a good that's a good deal. And they go on social media and they say I don't like the time travel. I don't believe in it. And then they text me at ten o'clock at night, Andrew Goldfarb, and they say, uh, Hey, do you got you got any cool stuff that you got from the future? And I'm like, Yeah, I'll hook you up. And <laughs> I just want to say. Yeah, I'll <laughs> snitch on you. I love you, but come on, man. That that is <laughs> that's you're an accomplice to time travel, and you know it. Do any of you guys have the robot protector guy? No, no. dude. You know how hard that is to it's get. So hard. Yeah, I got I the recipe. The yeah, it, it's funny because you're too. talking about you're talking about rolling credits, and I got the recipe and looked at it, and I was like, I, I think that I f I'll feel that I have beaten this game if I can build this freaking robot. Yeah, like that. So, there's so many rare items necessary to build them that I was yeah. just like, that seems like an end game thing for sure. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me let me speak to that real quick because because uh, I haven't yet, and I find this like utterly hilarious. To get that robot, mm -hmm. you have to get rusted component parts that are basically part of Gulliver's phone. And mm -hmm. so every time Gulliver almost dies and lands on your beach, he gets he gets there and he's like, I gotta call my friend, can you find my phone parts? And if you, <laughs> you say, say no. sure, no, if you say yes, and sure. then you go find them all, and then you don't give them to him and leave them on the beach to rot, and you just go in your apartment for a day or two, the regular parts become rusted parts. And so you have to do, you have to do that with 30 parts, which is six times you're telling six Gulliver, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go F yourself. And then, then <laughs> you get, it's just so funny to me. You just or leave this abandoned. <laughs> you could say yes, and you could do it 30 times because you check the recycle bin after Gulliver has been there, and there'll be one in there. That's oh right. My God. Oh, my God. Interesting. Interesting. And yeah. Gold, which I have three. Yeah. Yeah, I have I have six. <laughs> um, but the, you also need like, you need a gold armor. Yes. Uh -huh. Which you can only get, like it has to drift on a present across your Island. Uh, just a random chance. Oh, so that's like a weird thing about this game. It's like, I have a, I have a gold lucky cat in my house. And the uh -huh. only way to do that is to get a, re get lucky enough to get a regular lucky cat and then use a recipe to construct a gold version of it. So that's uh -huh. like dub Catch double rare leprechaun. prizes. Yeah. Twice. <laughs> Well, I think it's safe to say that we're all uh, a little bit obsessed with this game, maybe to an unhealthy extent. But uh, you know, what a great time we're all having, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, Zach, I also i i got a i think I got an extra copy of KK Cruising. If it's the jam. Oh, you got one. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, I've been looking every day to see if I could find a copy for you, but it's I haven't. Thank you. Pop up yet? Uh, no, I bought okay. I, I bought six. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. That sounds right. Uh, we're gonna play. We're gonna close out the show this week as we do most weeks with a little a little game that we like to play here on NBC called Question Block. Uh, so we already answered one question, but uh, uh, oh, actually, you know what? I'm sorry, I jumped the gun. We I, I did want to talk a little bit about what we're playing other than Animal Crossing. Uh, I'm I'm only playing Animal Crossing right now, but I'll let you you three talk about the other games that you're playing. Maybe Seth, you want to kick us off with a little Bravely Default talk? Yeah, I've been playing the Bravely demo uh, mm -hmm. because I am a big lame weirdo. I haven't beaten it. I've just been running around. I maxed out my jobs, my first jobs, and now I'm just grinding through the next set of jobs. Nothing to it. And then about three days ago, I uh, I died after I hadn't saved for a very long time, and it kind of put me off it. But Yep, I'm gonna dive right back into it. They they really cranked up the uh, the difficulty. No on that demo. It, it yeah. actually says that right. There's a disclaimer yeah. that it's uh, inflated. Yeah. Yes, but the 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 first enemies that you meet immediately outside of the town, they're a little tough at first, but you get it to about level 14 or 15, and they're extremely manageable. You go uh, two screens further, <laughs> and you will get killed, very very so I, brutally. We we a big fan of bravely. Was I a big fan of what? Bravely One, the first one. Yeah, I love both of those games, and I love Octopath Traveler, I, which is. Oh, you reviewed that. That's right. Yes. Yeah. That was so, funny. so thumbs up on the demo so far. I, I heard some pointed. The I'm really enjoying the demo. The thing that uh, I'm a little worried about, and I know you had, I think you had to unlock it through progress in part two, is that uh, one of the, my favorite things about those games was that you could adjust the enemy 
ratio. Like if you had one hit point and wanted to go from the dungeon back to town, you could just turn enemies off completely. Mm -hmm. Or if you mm -hmm. wanted to just like grind and get your levels up, you could turn them up to, you know, every three steps. <clears throat> I haven't seen that in this demo, but it just might, you know, it might just be. Because right, a, demo, that seems so. like the kind of thing that they might leave out of demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Functionality wise. Uh, you playing anything else that you wanted to, to note? Yeah, I, I, uh, I've been, you know, trying to tear myself away from Animal Crossing tabs of some of the new games coming out because they did not stop. There's still a ton of stuff coming out. So I jumped into Panzer Dragoon, which is the, you know, like a, a remake slash, you know, nicer looking version of the original game with, you know, warts and all. If you're not familiar with Panzer Dragoon, it's, it was basically Sega's answer to Star Fox. You know, a couple of years after Star Fox came out, people really liked this on Saturn. It, it elevated some things over Star Fox, but overall I've always felt like it was an inferior game. It's just not as exciting. And like the same holds true for this for this remake. It does feel very dated because they didn't do a lot to it other than shine it up pretty, fix some control issues. The big things that introduced over Star Fox was the ability to lock onto targets so to get those combo shots, which then 64 actually cribbed from Panzer Dragoon and the ability to um, look at different angles. So you can look uh, to the left, to the right, and behind you. Um, but overall, it's, it's a, it's a, it, it looks nice. It's a competent port. They put a lot of work into the cutscenes and everything. But it's like, I don't know. Our reviewer gave it a 6 out of 10. I think that's about right. If you're a fan of the original Panzer Dragoon, again, this is the shooter, not Saga, the spin-off RPG series that is awesome. Um, you know, give it a look. But you know, I, I, I would wait on this one. And then I, I, was, I, I go ahead. Huh? I was just gonna say I wish it was Panzer Dragoon Saga, but yeah. Yeah, and it's like Panzer Dragoon. Like the concept is great, but it is an on rail shooter where you know you're flying straight, and then the the magical camera says, "No, we're gonna veer left," and it doesn't feel like you're in control, right? It's the mm -hmm. early game design of when these systems weren't powerful enough to give you this open world and this freedom of choice. And I've always felt like Star Fox actually dealt with it better, better because you can play through an arch off to the right, you can fly yeah. through it. Whereas Panzer goes like, no, you know, it always steers you, steers you away. Um, I'm playing Good Job, which I'm really digging. Did yeah, that game looks that? awesome. No, that game looks really cool, though. It's a work simulator where you're the a-hole son of the CEO and basically you're failing upwards. <laughs> and you are, each, each level is like a puzzle in that, for example, one mission may be, hey, get all the employees who are slacking off, get them back into the boardroom. And like, you can do so by grabbing their chairs and wheeling them back into the room, but you can also wreak absolute mayhem. You can uh, use these oversized plugs and, um, you know, like unplug things and plug them into different outlets, and you're creating like a power cord that you can use as a slingshot. So you can <laughs> then take the people in the chairs and like, slingshot them through closed glass doors in order to get there as fast as possible. It is really fun. I, I was... Yeah. I was super surprised at this game. It's a really clever little puzzle game um, with just so many ridiculous little uh, ideas in it. It's really good. Uh, uh, and then, yeah, that's something that I've been meaning to check out. I, I really do want to try good, uh, good job. It, it looked really funny in the direct. Don't ignore this one. It's, uh, I think it's a studio that worked on the last Katamari too. So like oh, they, have a, oh, nice. they have a good sense of humor. It is completely ridiculous. And it's just like, it's got that job simulator thing where like you're supposed to do something, but you do it in the worst possible way. And, it's <laughs> and then finally I'm playing in other waters. Have you guys heard about that? No, no. In, in other waters is basically you are an AI in this, uh, you know, this uh, kind of submarine futuristic submarine that comes to life. And there's a, a human uh, person with you who has to rely on you to steer the ship now. And the entire game is played from the, viewpoint of a radar screen and some instrument panels. So in the oh, beginning, cool. it all comes online as like boot up text and stuff. And then you don't know what to do. And it's like, you basically have to figure out what each doohickey does. Yeah. And you start scanning and it goes like, oh, there's a life form there. And then, you know, the, the human player pipes in and goes, who the hell are you? You know, like you have this weird kind of mystery unfolding. Um, it's a, you know, it takes a particular player, I think, to enjoy this sort of adventure because it's not about this kind of open exploration and like really exciting graphics. It's very stylized, but it's, uh, it's very clever, very smart. Um, if you like cataloging life forms, like that whole kind of exploration of uh, life stuff, um, it, 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 it's good. You like it. Uh, it sounds interesting. Brian, are you playing anything besides Animal Crossing? 
I'm playing Resident Evil 3 on my PS4, oh. uh, which is not on Switch, but I'm really digging. Um, but I'm I'm every time I grab my Switch, I see the Animal Crossing square Same. and anything next to it just can't compete right now. And I'm sorry, <laughs> no disrespect. I'm trying my best to get to everything else. Uh, it, it is my job to play other games than one. Um, so I will. But right now it's just the one <laughs> yeah it's it's been very difficult to pull myself away from that so all right well let's let's move on uh i jumped the gun earlier but now let's let's go ahead and play some little question block here all right uh our first question comes from justin smith he says i've been playing some snes games on the switch this week and i started thinking about the sp versions that they released for the nes what snes games do you want to see special versions of and what would make it special Personally, I want Donkey Kong Country 2, but with the difficulty scaled so that a normal person could get past the third world without weaving a tapestry of obscenity. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good one. Uh, easy oh, answer man. for me is, you know, when I'm looking at the, the visual fidelity of Final Fantasy VII, I go back to 4, 5, 6. 4, 5, 6 are some of my favorite RPGs of all time. Yeah. The music, the characters, you know, it's such strong stories. I, it's, it, seems to be, it seems to be a Herculean task to take one of these games with their long storylines and turn them into 3D adventures, which is why Square is chopping up 7. But, like, if, you know, money was no object and they had all the developers in the world, like, just get them to play <laughs> You know, at least five and six again. I, I would know. take I would take a version of six that is like not dissimilar from Final Fantasy three for the three DS, where it was like chibi style. You know, like I I really liked uh, uh, that conversion. I thought that was really cool. My my answer is similar pair. Like I I'll even take a lower a lower uh, barrier to entry here, but I just want Chrono Trigger on the SNES collection and put the Akira Toriyama cutscenes in there that that came with the Ooh, PlayStation version. Oh, yeah. I think that'd be really cool. Like that's sort of the definitive version. That's the the edition that's on 3DS. And so, like, if that could come to the Switch, I'd be be a happy man. Brian, Seth. Um, I mean, the SP versions of these games are usually like pretty low rent. Like they're they're just like you start at the end of Zelda. And you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks. Those weren't that oh. special. Right. Yeah. I would like to play Super Metroid where you don't lose all your powers. You just have them. Yeah. Right? Actually, I was going to suggest that. Like, if there's if they give you, like, a version of Super Metroid where you just start, like, mid-game with, like, 80% of the cool stuff um, yeah. without having to do all this stuff at the beginning, which I enjoy, but still, it'd, it'd yeah. be cool just to, like, jump in and play, like, the last half of that game super-powered. I, I don't like the... I honestly don't like the SP versions. No, me neither. I, I hate that they take up the same real estate as the real games. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge problem. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> I, I, want, I want something really special, not something just SP fight with a save, uh, starting right. save. But, you know, there may be some people who are into, uh, into speed running, maybe uh, into like something where everything is unlocked from the get go um, for like level stuff, like for the Mario series. But I think, you know, the, maybe the uh, Star Fox competition cartridge or something would be cool, you know, where you oh, have yeah. a special version of one of Nintendo's games that was designed for competitions to bring that back for the mm -hmm. Switch and then be the foundation again for competitions. That, I think that's a little bit closer to an answer for what he was actually, actually Yeah, asking. that's, yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah. Seth, did you have a uh, pick as well? Uh, I mean, the Super Metroid one, I think. Oh, you but did now, say now thinking yeah. about, thinking, As the world's foremost pilot wings expert, <laughs> I would like a competitive pilot wings because then I would just win at it. Good. Yeah. Okay. Did not uh, our next question comes from you can ask Justin. He watched me stream pilot wings. I am the best pilot wings super NES player in the world. Do the do the instructors always go? They always have their eyes are huge. They're tears streaming. They can't believe how how great a job I did every time. Uh, C congratulations, Seth. We're really proud of you. Uh, you next you question so comes from We're Liz Morgan. Liz asks, uh, what are the NBC uh, crew's guilty pleasure games? I have to say mine is Cooking Mama. I spent an embarrassingly large amount of time with this one, the 3DS, uh, DS and 3DS. That being said, I'm looking forward to it coming to Switch. What are some guilty pleasure games that you guys uh, like to play? Like besides Animal Crossing? I mean, <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, I spent like an hour and a half shaking trees yesterday. Like that's, a, <laughs> that's kind of a guilty pleasure. <laughs> Uh, I got really into Simpsons Tapped Out for a while. It's just yeah, like, it's one of those, too. right? Like, I don't know yeah, why. I spent I mean, a lot of money on that. 
Yeah, I think yeah. I did too. Uh, I, I was just like hopelessly addicted to just like checking in on my town every single day, building out a bunch of stuff. And I think it got to a point where I had like 140 different characters from the show in my game and every single one of them like needed something every day. And I was like, this is too much. I got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For me, it was always Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario is like this one game that connected everybody in my family. And he, the kids were little or, you know, my wife who doesn't play a game. Um, were around, like we'd be able to get everybody and grandma together to play this game. So Dr. Mario is always like this go-to game, a uh, guilty pleasure that we can just waste hours on. Did you yeah. send your Did you send your grandmother an email to, her to play Dr. Mario with you? No, I did not. <laughs> that's, uh, let's see. That's Seth, a, that's uh, a good throwback. Yeah. Uh, what's your <laughs> guilty callback, pleasure rather. game, Seth? Uh, it's a toss-up between uh, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, which uh, I have... Yeah. Uh, close to a thousand hours into and uh ftl faster than light which i lost an entire mm. weekend once playing that game and i've only actually ever beaten ftl twice okay but i bet i have hundreds of hours into that game and it's on ipad which i just unfortunately seems discovered. seems bad for you but <laughs> sure ftl <laughs> should be on switch pad ftl yeah, would be a great really good. switch game that uh, mm -hmm. is one of my all-time favorite games uh, mine, mine is of course, Breath of the Wild. That's a game that I go back to constantly to the extent that when, uh, whenever I mention it to my girlfriend now, she's things like, again, really, that's what you're going to do. That's how you're going to spend your day. So I feel like that's my guilty pleasure game for sure. Wait, Hell, you, hello, you, don't have, you don't have to be guilty for loving that. That's one of the best games of all time. You, you guys were supposed to name bad games or like, I know, not but it's like, games. it's like one of those deals where it's like, oh, I have, you know, I have doom eternal. Yeah. I I've played you know the first 90 minutes of that game and i i should like you're saying brian like i should play it because i need to be aware and considering it for like game of the year and stuff but instead yep. it's like oh well what if i i just thought of one what if <laughs> i fought the, what if i fought the guiltiest, wild again like, guiltiest pleasure game of all and everyone's going to hate me for that but which one? donkey kong 64 donkey kong 64 yeah 101 percent of it because it's a bad it's a bad game and that's nope, why you should feel great go. game Barrett no, Courtney it's actually it's somewhere actually through a bad, his hands uh, uh okay. Uh next question comes from James Gold. Uh James asks, uh Bill Trudin said that Nintendo is not not a big company. What did he mean by that? Is he talking about Nintendo of America, all the regions? It seems they have quite a few studios under the umbrella that makes games. So I did a little bit of research on this and I wanted to to kind of compare numbers here. So According to Wikipedia, Nintendo uh, says that uh, across all of their of their companies, they have uh, 6,113 employees. Uh, EA, for reference, has 9,000, and a company like Ubisoft has 16,000. Pear, I, I feel like you might be our, our best source. What, what do you think uh, Bill Trinan said, uh, meant when he said that Nintendo was not a big company? <clears throat> Well, it's not it's not a mega corporation the way you know Google is, or even you know like Google, Facebook, Amazon. Um, you know, as a, a as a publisher, obviously it is it is large scale, right? Like it's bigger than a lot of third party publishers, but not the same size as Sony Computer Electronics with all the different pieces that are attached to it or Microsoft, which is a lot more than Xbox. And so Nintendo is singular and focused and focused in that it makes video games and, you know, a couple of old card decks and Hanafuda decks and stuff like that. So I think that's what he means. And like, it doesn't feel like um, when you look at uh, their Kyoto campus too and the size of it, it, it looks small. I mean, you look at, you look at Apple and it's freaking city, right? You go to, uh, you know, you go to the Midwest and you look at Procter Gamble or it's Procter and Gamble. It's like entire cities. They even have like the streets and the city parts named after them. So I think that's what he means. Okay. That's, I feel like that's a pretty solid answer. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the last question here comes from, uh, let me see, uh, Zach Ryan in San Francisco. Um, he mm -hmm. says, hey, it seems like a lot of NVC fans are pretty annoyed with us that we uh, haven't given Xenoblade Chronicles a fair shake. Uh, do we think that any of us will play the Xenoblade Chronicles game when it comes out in May? I know exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to play it. And I'm going to be like, wow, this is, this is totally for me. And then I'm just not. That's what I've done with the one that they put out on 3DS. That's what I did with the one that came out uh, launched on Switch. I was like, wow, I love this so much. I can't wait to explore this incredible world. And then I just, I just didn't. That's fair. Mr. Schneider? Games like Animal Crossing are the enemy of games like Xenoblade. So I'm hoping that there'll be a gap 
uh, following its release that there is you know a month long nothing no big game on xbox or playstation or no big vr release and no big switch release and like i'm i'm liking everything i see whenever i jump into an, into a xenoblade game and it is just a time factor you know that's keeping me from from diving deeper yeah i i i feel like i i do one big jrpg every year like I, mm-hmm. I usually pick one to kind of burn through and i think this year as as a a testament to the NVC fans. I'm really going to try and give Xenoblade Chronicles a fair shake, and maybe try and get a couple other NVC uh, buds on board, like Casey and Tom. Maybe if they if they've got the time to, and we can sit down and in earnest talk about the game. Because I know a lot of our fans out there are very very vocal in the fact that they they really love and admire uh, respect this game as one of the best JRPGs. And so uh, I, I just kind of wanted to bring that up because we we've caught a lot of flack about it in previous episodes, last week especially. So I did want to say we're uh, you know we're going to get out there, we're going to give it a shot. Yeah, and honestly, I, I used to travel a lot, right? I used to be on a plane every week. Well, a lot of us used to travel a lot. <laughs> yeah, used to travel that outside. And um, I, I love RPGs like that, long games that I can play when I'm on a flight to like Japan or, or Europe. And um, so I think when we return to normal, I'm going to have a lot more time to play games like that. Yeah, sounds good. Well, gentlemen, that is all the time that we have for today. We did, you know, if I may say so myself, did a bang up show. Great work, you guys. Nice job. Thanks. Uh, Thank remember, you. this is the only place. Well, I got up. I'm sorry. I did a story. <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember, uh, you can watch Nintendo Voice Chat every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on IGN.com or YouTube, and we're always streaming on your favorite podcast platform. Uh, I'm sorry for doing cussies, and remember, this is the only place that you can. Get the thing? Is that what you were asking about? Yes. Get the thing. (laughs) Get the thing.